Hey folks, it's Ridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Boulder Canyon. I'm just correcting this little baby down here because he came up to the corner and seen the trailer and then gave up. He didn't like it. He got scared, he turned around and ran away again. So we're just going to set that one off. Make a ship into the night for a tractor across a field. Doing that bit over there and then... Excuse me. We can head back up here. I can start you up. I can press huh like that. Huh for H. And we can just finish off this little bit just here. And as soon as it gets to the end of the row, we are going to run up to the other end of the field and get the last little bit up there. So I'm going to press H on there like that and let it do that bit. Then I'm going to run down through here. Get that bit down there, and then I'm going to actually, I think, run the rake down to the yard. I'm not just going to dump it off here. I'm going to run it all the way down to the yard. So I will go like that there, and then start it up. Actually, I can just lift that one so that we can do it like that, and then lower it down again. Now, run along here. Rake up that bit, and then there's just a little tiny bit there with the rake, which is looks like two passes with the baler if we didn't bother raking i am going to rake it though i am actually going to rake that so i'll pick that one up and then swing around like that come over to this side lower you down again and job done right there we go we've got that bit all finished so then i can fold this one up and we'll start making our way down the hill with the rake don't really want to be driving across the rows. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you drive across the rows, so long as you don't do it in such a way that you're going to be spreading the hay along as you go. And that's the more difficult bit. Sometimes it is uh, difficult to avoid spreading it as you go. Now, coming down here, because it's quite light, I haven't got anything heavy on there. Uh, I was in a higher gear, and then I used the brakes on the hill. That wouldn't be a problem. That I couldn't see that being any kind of an issue. I mean, maybe there are certain circumstances where it could become a bit of an issue. Um, freshly cut grass, even if you're just like if you're on the stubble of the grass, it can be quite slippery at times. So you do have to be a little bit careful that it's not too slippery. If it is, then trouble can ensue. You don't really want it to be too slippery. Uh, wait a minute. How much? I'm, I'm curious how much I got in with the cows going past there and I don't know how much is actually in it. Cleanliness with those is good. Cleanliness with those is good. And cows. 17,000 litres of milk. We got 200,000 litres, uh, 200,000 yeah, litres of total mixed ration in there. We've got 138 cows at present and counting. So we've just now got to run up to the bailer. We can, that one can keep going now, the cultivator. He's going to do what he's doing down in the field there. We will let him keep going with the cultivating. And he's going to go round the field two, well, three, I'd say three times maybe. If we have him three times round the field, once, twice, maybe three times a lady. I, I don't know. What do you think? Um, and then we will, once he's done two or three times then we'll set him doing the just the, the the standard land work and it can work its way across the field by that time we will have finished doing the baling we will have like this um and we will have gone round and gathered up all the bales as well that's the last bit was we'll we'll finish doing the baling today get that done and then once the cultivating is finished on the field down the bottom i will hook the fertilizer spinner back onto that tractor We'll run up here and we will throw a bit of fertilizer onto this field up here. We have only need to do one coat of fertilizer on the field. After, just after we've cut, clear it, put a coat of fertilizer, and then you can shut the gate and let the grass get on with doing its business of growing. Grass is pretty good at doing that. doesn't really need a lot of encouragement. Um, throw on a little sprinkle of fertilizer just to start things off. And generally the miracle will happen. And you don't need to worry about it too much. So I'm just going to take a couple of rows upwards from where we were. That's going to take me right to the middle of the rock. So I'm actually going to go round the other side, go right up the other end, and I'll do it kind of like that. So we'll, we'll treat it like uh, a long row. 
And they're just slightly broken up with a big stone. Right. Smack bang in the middle. Um, you know, I've been thinking... What I'd really like to see with the next version of the game is the ability to have a big old rocky outcrop like this, but remove it. You know, you remember the game that I played quite some time ago now called Demolish and Build? That game, that game was pretty good. I mean, it, 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 wasn't, it was pretty basic with some things, but it was basically just a simulator of construction and destruction equipment. It was, well, just all construction equipment. This is, we just generally call it construction equipment. But it was a simulator of construction equipment. You had diggers, rollers, bulldozers, loads of hand tools and stuff as well. And you know, it, was, it was pretty good. There, there was, there, you had a full sort of quota of different construction equipment. It wasn't just diggers. You had um, a couple different types of excavator. You had a crane with a um, wrecking ball on it, which was pretty awesome. And there were a few other things as well. And the way, that in, like, the, the physics for destroying things and knocking buildings down, it was pretty good. I, I thought the game was quite reasonable. And I did do a series on it. But I'd like, I'd kind of like to see a combination of that with this. I think that could work fairly well. Now, you are apparently blocked by an object. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you're not blocked by an object. I'm just going to say that being stupid. Uh, I could be wrong, you, you might not actually be a moron, but you do give the general impression of being a moron. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to turn off the beacon, because otherwise it's going to irritate me monstrously. And we're going to let you carry on with your second time around the field. You're doing pretty good though, you are doing pretty good, so we'll let, we'll let you carry on. I love how the shaft there is vibrating ever so slightly. A lot of that is actually going to be the cover that's doing the vibrating rather than the shaft itself. Um, but that is quite that is a very realistic little effect on there. I like that. I've not, I've not really noticed that before. The way that that vibrates like that. But that is a realistic thing. Uh, like, they do tend to shake up and down a bit. Because the covers stay still. You don't want the covers spinning round. They're not supposed to spin round. The covers stay still and the PTO shaft inside it moves. And that tends to make the cover shake and rattle a little bit. Um, generally, you don't have a big baler running on the 540 speed. You generally have a big baler running on the 21 spline 1000 speed on the PTO. So it's turning round at 1000 revolutions per minute. So it's 1000 RPM. Um, 1000 rotations per minute when the tractor is at the appropriate revs. And then that is translated into powering the machine that goes along behind it. A lot of old, most, well, almost every single older machine runs on 540. Um, bigger machines, bigger tools on the tractors, they tend to run at 1,000. And they have a, a different um, spline shaft on them than the ones that run at 540. So new machines, they split. It does seem to be the bigger ones run at 1,000. I have noticed at times that you get um, some machines like mowers will run at a thousand. It does really depend entirely on the mower in question. Some mowers will do will take the thousand spline at the thousand twenty one spline shaft, and some will take the five forty. Uh, so I I don't really know. It's been a long time since I've had anything to do with any putting anything on a tractor that requires the thousand spline. Everything I've run in the last 10 years has only been run on a 540. So it's, um, it's something that I haven't seen being used for a very long time. And different tractors have them done in different ways. Some of them, you just pull the PTO shaft out of the back of the tractor. There's a release thingy on it. But you, you basically you pull the thing out and turn it round, plug it back in again. And you, you've got the 1000 on one side and the 540 on the other. Uh, others, I think most of them, especially modern ones... Is two separate ones. You've got two separate shafts. You, you pull one out, you put it in the toolbox, and you put the thousand one in. Um, I might have that wrong, though. See, this is a problem. It's, I, I've, I used to be a farmer. I used to be a farmer, but I haven't worked as a full-time farmer for over a decade. And things have changed in my time. Like, before I, before I left farming, I'd heard of uh, Blue, I think it was called, an additive that goes in a diesel. And these days, uh, it's standard. I'd heard of it. I'd never seen it. 
I, I did know that some tractors were being equipped with it, some brand new tractors that you put blue in it. Uh, I think it's to do with reducing pollution that comes from the tractor. Uh, but I've, I've never used it, and these days, as I understand it, almost all, certainly larger tractors, come with the blue additive as standard. It's, it's just a standard thing. There are two tanks on the tractor, one on one side for blue and one on the other side for diesel. And it's it's just a standard thing. And I, I so, like, there's things like that. GPS seems to be standard in just about every vehicle. I've never used a GPS system in my life. When I was, I did see a GPS on a combine being um, demoed, and that was, we're, we're talking 20 years ago now, and it was accurate to within, I can't remember now, I think it was accurate to within 4 inches, so, so 10 centimetres, uh, 100 mil, it was accurate to within 100 mil. Whereas, running the combine by eye, just you literally just looking at the combine and driving it normally, we would generally be accurate within 10 millimeters. So we were more accurate than the machine. I've been told these because I said, you know, I, I thought that that was, it, it, has it changed? I, it was a little while ago I was talking about it. But um, I've been told that these days, if your GPS is only accurate to 10 mil, you'd be a bit disappointed with it. They are accurate to the millimeter. And that to me is absolutely incredible i mean i i kind of expect it i kind of expect given the uh, advances in computing in the last 20 years and the advances in my own personal computer my mobile phone things like that i kind of expect these same advances to be reflected in various other technology as well especially with farming uh but i've never actually seen it in action i've never seen I, i've seen videos of it but i've never personally sat in the tractor and engaged the gps and set it up and um, then sat there in wonder with my feet up while the tractor drives itself around the field. I've seen videos of people doing that and it is quite a remarkable thing being able to see these tractors drive themselves around the fields. That is, and it, it is genuinely an amazing thing. Right, I'm going to bring you to that point right there and we are getting to the end of this row. We've done three times along the top headland here and we've done twice around the bottom end of the field so I'm going to stop you there and then I'm going to turn you a little bit I'm going to bring you over to here now it does kink out a little bit down the bottom of that field so I'm actually going to go all the way out like that in the hope that it's going to straighten it up now for the rest of the field and then I'm going to go alt h uh, control h like that and I'm going to turn that one off so that we're now on standard hired help run you up to the end and you should run all the way down through and then cultivate out the rest of this field without too much trouble we've got enough passes around the edge that that should be absolutely fine so you stay doing that i'm going to jump back up to this one and we're going to just finish up these few rows i've got that one down there i want to spin around and try and get if i could just hook on to you that would be great there we go fantastic I uh, got two long runs plus that little squinty bit over there and then a few short passes and we may even have time to pick up all the bales as well. We've got a trailer load and a bit of bales here and we can get those. We'll go and stack them up over there. I'll, stick, so I'll probably stick a whole trailer load of the bales into the mixed feeder. We'll just dump them straight in and then the rest of the bales of hay can go around the back of the pig shed. And they can sit there waiting for the sheep to need them and for the cows to need them after we've used up our entire trailer load of bales that I've put into the mixed feeder. I'm hopeful that we're not going to need too many of them. We have uh, is it 24 bales goes on to a trailer. So we're talking 160, uh, 160 plus half 200,000. We're talking 200,000 litres of hay on one trailer load. Roughly, 200,000 litres of hay. With just the hay, uh, if you add in like similar quantities of straw and silage, that should be enough to see the cows through until right to the end. I don't imagine I'm going to need any more than that. Just one trailer load of hay and then all the rest with the other stuff. Um, I did work that out correctly, didn't I? With 10 bales is 80,000 litres, so 20 bales is... No, I didn't work it out quite correctly. Uh, 20 bales is 
200,000. Uh, it's sorry, 20 bales is 160,000 liters. And I got four more bales, it's 32. So it's actually 192,000 liters. That's what we have going in. It's 192,000 liters of hay goes into our mix feeder. And then I just need to get a bit of silage and a bit of straw in there as well. So the next cut that we do off of this field is going to be silage bales, which we will be keeping. We're not going to get rid of them. We want to keep all of the silage bales as well. And that, along with the straw that we get from our, not our next crop, but the crop after that, from the big field down there, uh, from the arable field down there, that will be everything that we need in order to get all of our vehicles, crops, everything else all done. That's, that's going to be it. At least I'm hoping. Um, and then after that, we're looking, well, hopefully looking at crops for cash. I am seriously considering doing an arable crop up here. But if we do that, we're going to need a bigger combine. There's no way we can do an arable crop up here with the combine that we got. And do it in a timely fashion. Because that is the other sort of consideration that we've got to have. Is how long is it going to take to do any particular crop. Uh, or any particular harvest. Now if I go trying to do a harvest with the uh, combine that we got. With the dominator that we got down there. It's just not going to do it is it. it, it we're not going to be able to do that in a timely enough fashion. It's going to take us... Like an entire week just about to do one harvest. Now, I, admittedly, I have been doing this now for a week. So, it's not far off of what we've done here. I don't want it to take longer than this. This one, we've at least have set, we've had several different jobs going on this hay harvest here, haven't we? We've, we've had the combine running down the bottom. We've had the rake. We've had some baling. We've had turning. We've had more baling. We've had bales being gathered up. So, we've had a variety of different tasks, despite the fact that we've been focused on getting all of this baling finished and if we were to turn this all into one big grain field if we didn't do something to just speed it along like a much bigger combine it's gonna take it's gonna take absolutely ages like it really is gonna take a ridiculous amount of time to do it plus we still we got to keep the thing unloaded we got to be able to keep that combine moving and that's another thing that does take a little bit of time it takes it's it's all all of these things pile up and then they take longer and longer and longer and longer. And that's one thing that I'm always up against with a Let's Play series. With Farming Simulator Let's Play, it's trying to find that balance between doing the jobs and keeping it entertaining and, you know, visually appealing for you. Of course, I could do what some people do, which is do the big job, but chop out most of the footage and just sit here and play for myself for two hours and then show you the conclusion but i don't want to do that i do that i already do that i show you all the footage in time lapse i, I do the big jobs in time lapse so with when it comes to the rest of it when it comes to the let's plays i do either the smaller ones or i figure out ways to do slightly different uh bigger jobs because i i've i have had people saying well why don't you just like do a load of it and then time lapse it because that takes hours and hours and hours <laughs> That's why, basically, um, I do do a lot of other videos, and I don't want to stop doing other videos. I don't want to just play one game for even more hours than I do, because I get fed up to the back teeth with it, and then I never want to play it again. And that ends up making rubbish videos. I don't really want to do that. I'd, I'd rather make um, better videos and uh, more of a variety of them than try and change it around too much. I'm going to run this one all the way down to the bottom, and then I'm going to unload these two bales down. I'm going to unload them down the bottom of the hill down here, I think. Although that one's about to fall off anyway. That one on the back. He's about to drop off right there, if we ain't careful. I was going to try and take it along the road, but I don't think I will. I think I'm going to dump it just here, like that. Let that one out, and then we will fold up this baler. So there's another item that I'm going to take back to the yard and I'm going to put it next to the wash pad over there. It's a wash machine. It's not a washing machine. Um, it's a pressure washer. We'll, we'll, the, the wash pad. We'll take this one. We'll dump this one next to the wash pad. We've got enough machines here to keep us uh, busy for an entire day with the pressure washer. Hey, seriously, look how much we've got here. We've got them all lined up. We've got mowers. We've got a turner, we've got a small tractor, we've got the rake over here. I'm actually going to drive round here. It's not very, it's not 
wet ground or anything like that, so I can whiz round it. And you know what? I'm actually I'm I'm gonna hose a bit of this off. As we're here, I'm gonna clean this one off just for a minute, and I'm gonna clean off my tractor over there and I'm clean off the baler because the tractor. As soon as I've done the stuff with the ba with the trailer, once I got the bales out of the way, and I've got the you know picked up the the bales with the trailer. I'm then going to go straight on with planting, and I'm not going to be stopping then to go and wash a tractor off. So if I do it now, I'll do this one here. We'll hose this off, and then we'll go and pop this one away in the shed. He's, he's done with then. The baler is finished with. It's washed. It's put away. Uh, it's, it's finished for the season. We don't need it anymore, at least not for the time being. And we will then go and do the trailer work, and then we can park the trailer up in the yard, and we can go and get the planter hooked on and get going with that bit. So I'm just going to clean off this front weight here. Don't actually need the front weight for anything other than just getting the bales. I am going to have it for getting the bales. A little bit of extra weight on the front, just holding us down. There's a little bit of extra grip on the fields. We try to pull up the hill at any point is going to be something that's useful. I'm not going to change the wheels over to the weighted wheels, although that might be something that we would be glad of. We'll just make sure that we travel in a way that is safe. That's what we'll do. When, when the man is busy working with the uh, load all and he's clearing the bales off the field, or front loader, whichever one, you know, if, he, if he's doing it with the Deutz and clearing it using the front loader, when he's busy doing that, we will... Have him put in the bales, drag him off the hill and bring him down to the bottom. And then we haven't got to worry about driving on the hills with our trailer, with our danger mouse. Um, let's bring you round this way and there. A little bit more. There. And then I can bring that one back. And I want to keep that one in tight to the bar on this side. We keep that next to that stanchion there. There you go you through. I'm just going to leave you there to go any tighter than that, I don't think. And we're going to get these bales on here. I want to get more bales loaded onto this trailer before I go and tip it. Now, the problem with that is they're all up on steep hills, so I don't think I... I, I might not do that. I'm, what I'm going to do, actually, I think, is I'm going to go and get those two bales there, and I'm going to get the two bales down here, and then we'll take the, we'll take the rest of these and we'll unload them. That's just close enough. He would have brought those down. Our front loader dude. But to be honest, if it was a front loader dude, he would have brought down these two up here. Like, he would have got these. He probably would have got that one over there as well. And he would have brought them, just hooked them up and brought them down to the bottom of the field. So we'll do that as well. And we'll just assume that we've loaded them from the bottom of the field. I don't have it on 30 times speed because we're using... Um, We've got planting going on. Actually, we haven't got planting going on, so we... Yeah, we can. We'll keep that on 30 times speed while we do this little bit. So I'll bring you to there, and I'm going to stop loading. I'm going to unload onto the trailer, and we're going to do that. And this first load, I will bring down here like this. don't normally like to come out the field that way. I like to go out the entrance way, but we're going to do it this way just this once. And I'm bring you around here. I'm going to dump all of this hay straight in here. So I bring you up to that point. Straps off. And then we're going to run in through here. And I was out too far for that to work. That's ridiculous. You really do have to be in quite tight for it to unload here, don't you? I thought that it would be unloaded on the other one, but it's not going to. Didn't like that. I need to go right in like this. Then I can take those straps off. And I can run along here. There you go. See? Now i got to turn around. I've got to do that again. So, strap them on again. And... Round tight. Like this. Back round a bit more. Over there. And... Up that way. Right, now. Straps off again. That's better. <laughs> Nope, apparently that's not better at all. I need to get over more, so I'm gonna bring I'm just gonna nudge my tractor over this side just a little tiny bit further. Hopefully that there we go. Right, we've just managed to drag them over enough. Now I'm still running on 30 times speed. I'm gonna go back into the actual field. I'm gonna leave it on 30 times speed until we've cleared this field. 
because I already went round and I did some other bales and moved those. And until we actually start planting, 30 times speed is acceptable. Looks like we've had, have we had any grass? We haven't had any grass growth in here yet. I'm going to go up this way. Go a little bit steady, it would probably help. And I'm going to get these over here. And then we'll head right up the top. Start clearing them up there. Those are going to be the next ones that we go for. Get these, and there's like five of them in a group just over there, which I want to get next. And then there's a load on that hill, but it's not them that I want. I want all of these up the top. If I clear all of these first, then we've got the ones that are furthest away from the farm to start with. Get those, and these four over this side. Then we can start working our way back over, and then we've just got the ones that are left on the hill to finish up with. So I won't put any more of the bales for now into the feed mixer. I'm going to just go and take these and put them all behind the pig shed, I think. I only had a couple bales short of making up the full load that I went to drop into that mixer. I think it's going to be quicker if we just concentrate on getting them off the field. And that's what I want to do. I want to get them off the field. I want this job done so that we can get the planter on and we can get started with that. We've got planting to get done. We've got corn to get in the ground. Time is of the essence. It's what we need to do. We, we need to get that corn in the ground. So let's bring you on round this way over here. And right, I've got a few bales along the top here. Now, in order to safely get down from this field, I'm thinking the best route for us to take is not taking a shortcut down through the trees down that steep bit down there. No, the best and safest method for us to employ going to be to spin around here we will start off by putting these on the trailer right here so we will unload onto the trailer and put the straps on there then we're just gonna go out and we're gonna follow the road we'll use the road we, we can't go too fast all the way through but the road we've got a better chance of actually being able to use our brakes without sliding away and dying so that's why I want to use the road more than I want to use any other. This road does, it is a bit tippy in places. Like this bit here, I'm, I, I'm not entirely happy with the way that the road slants off to one side right there. That's a, a little bit precarious. You, you wouldn't want to load your load too high on there, would you? And it seems to be doing all right. We are going to be quite reliant on the trailer brakes going down the hill. But I think they will do all right. They should stand the test of um, time, the, the test of endurance as we head down this hill. I don't think they're going to cause us any major problems. That's what I'm saying right here. Is I don't think that we're going to have any major issues caused by the trailer brakes. They've, they're pretty good. We did check them before we started. We made sure that they were all working and... Um, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing we did. But like I've said before, I'm not entirely sure I would want to do this job with this trailer. I would feel uncomfortable doing this job with this trailer. I really, would certainly on this ground. Like, if we were clearing that field down there, I'm pointing with my finger. I'm literally pointing at the screen in front of me with the finger to point at where the, at the bit that I'm meaning. And, um, yeah, you can't see that. Um, if we were clearing the arable field of bales in real life then yes, I would be quite happy to go and use this trailer on that field. It's not steep. I, my only problem with this one is for steep ground. I don't think that this trailer is uh, suited in any way, shape or form for steep ground. And from what I, I mean, I did rabbit on about this last time I was using this trailer on steep ground, so I am repeating myself a little bit. Uh, those of you who did comment about that said pretty much the same. You wouldn't use this trailer for doing that job. Not on not on steep ground. I didn't have very many people... I don't think I had anybody say that they would use this trailer on steep ground for clearing bales. Even with trailer brakes. It's... It basically, it's the sort of situation where you look at it and you go... Uh, no thanks. I choose life. It is... It, it, that's, that's the kind of thing that springs to mind. That That, that is... That, that's what springs to mind for me when I, when I look at this situation. Is is literally just, no thanks, I choose life. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that one where he is. We've got a lot of hay here. Like, we really have. We've, we've got an awful lot of hay here now. We, we've got more than enough to see us through. We've absolutely got more than enough to see us through. With everything I've just gone and put in the mix feeder, 
Plus all of these bales here, we have got loads of the stuff. We will easily be able to do everything that we want to do. So I bring you there like that. I will load those onto the trailer. We go like that, and we dump them off behind us like that. Then we can go off and get the next load. I have just about run out of time for today's episode, though, so I don't think we're going to be able to get the final load back. But I think we've done pretty well. We've gotten all of the bales baled. All the baling is baled and done and finished. We've got a very sizable chunk of the field there has now been cultivated, which is looking fantastic. So that one is continuing on unabated. While I've got an empty trailer, I'm going to go up the steep bit. I'm going to take this one straight up here. I'm going to go and get these bales from the top, and I'm going to work my way back down over that side. Um, but yeah, we've got... that. That's, that's, do that's doing very well down there. We will be able to, in our next episode, finish gathering all of the bales, and we will be able to get a good start on the planting of the corn. We've got $18,000, which is enough money to see us through to the end of planting and all the fertilizer that we're going to need as well so we we got no issues as far as money is concerned and we're getting more money in the morning with the milk from the cows and there's possibly more money coming in from the sheep as well because they have got quite a bit of wool there and wool has just recently price has been down I don't know what it's gone up to now because we've been ticking along a little bit with time for it. 750 has just started now to come up. So we could end up with a reasonable price for wool uh, by tomorrow when we go to sell the milk. Milk, it's on a green arrow there, so it's climbing. I don't know how much it's climbing by. I have no clue on that front, but um, it is climbing by a little bit. Right. I'm going to get this line of bales. Actually, the way we're going to do this, we're going to follow this line here. Because we've got, a, we've got a nice easy line that we can run through here. Like that. And bring you down there. And... Right, this is the bit where we, we wouldn't be doing this with this trailer. Right, we're just auto-loading it. This, this would have been cleared by the man with the loader. That would have already been done. Or a woman with the loader. Person with the loader. That would have been cleared by the person with the loader. And then we come up round this way. The reason that we constantly say man, I have had people say, why do you always say man? Why do you always assume it's a bloke? Uh, mainly because 90% of people that work in agriculture and construction as well, or they might be down to like 85% now, are men. And, I mean, yes, it's, uh, it's because it's a quite um, physically demanding job, you will typically find more men doing it. You typically find the physically demanding jobs take uh, have more men working in them than women it's just one of those things uh so no i'm not inherently sexist it's just how it is uh let's turn that one off and then put that one on like that and yeah i'm, sl I'm sliding down the hill there was a slightly there just a little bit of sliding down the hill i I'd, I'd, I'm, I'm actually uh, I'm, I'm using my brakes i'm using my brakes savagely there see that is what you don't want. Right there. That would have flipped me right over. We would, have, we would have been in serious trouble there if those trailer brakes hadn't kicked in. Do you see us tip up then? That was that was some bad juju right there. Right, anyway, I have run out of time. We'll empty this out in our next episode. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time... Thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.